Suddenly, you got Hello. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Good. It's going very well. Good. Collectively, are we all well? Is there anyone who's not well who wants to speak up? Migraine. Migraine. So sorry about that. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Eisner Awards, flashing lights overhead. Uh, Stress. What have, we, have we done anything to solve yes. that? Yes, pills. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't want to kick in. Good. That's probably my fault, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you dazzled me when you walked in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question about the tone of this show. Because I feel like a lot of the work you've done has been very hyper realistic, even though it's been really extreme. And so, is, are we going to get a very realistic look at Satan or at the Antichrist? Are we going to, or is it going to be full blown like gothic, you know, kind of fantasy? Oh, that's a great question. Um, no, it is. It is realistic. We're using the original 1976 film as the source, not only of the story, but of the style of filmmaking, you know, and that, sh that film was very grounded, it felt like it was taking place in this world, and so we're trying to follow that, you know, I think that's what makes the, the horror play, if we feel that it's real, once, the, once something becomes, you know, very involved and in, uh, very dependent on special effects or something, I tend to feel, I, t I tend to feel not as frightened, to tell you the truth, you know, it, it, so mm -hmm. we're trying to stay as realistic feeling as possible. So is it more like a thriller as opposed to horror, or more specific? No, it's a horror, it's both a horror and a thriller, I mean, if you think about it, the, the character of Damien is, is involved in a conspiracy that's being run by Satan, okay, well, <laughs> hopefully that's thrilling, but... You know, we certainly have those horror sequences, which, uh, uh, you know, that the omen is known for. So we're both, you know, it gives us a lot to play with every week. Certain types of effects we can expect? What's that? Any kind of certain effects that we're going to see? Uh, you, know, you know, what they, they, we're gonna, we have something that I think is very special in the first episode. I don't want to, I don't want to give anything away, but there's, there's something that is, will be sort of unique to Damien that I think horror fans fans of the film people will enjoy but I, I so there's there's a little surprise there the original film has a real atmosphere of inevitability mm -hmm. which is what Damien do you, how interested are you guys in that with this <laughs> now that he's older there's a real shape more of a struggle between who he is and who he wants to be I think that's another one for you. Okay. Um, I would say this. I think that the character is always facing the question of fate versus free will. You know, if there are higher force or uh, greater forces leading him along a certain path, how can he fight against that? You know, and, and I think that is a question of his own humanity, but I'm sure those forces would not be interested in his answer. So that's where we get our, our uh, story from. <laughs> okay, kind of a, a darker role for you. So, what attracted you to take on Damien? Um, it was it was reading the, the script. I'm, that's probably a standard answer for most actors when they go, "Oh, I love the script." But um, you get sent lots of scripts uh, as an actor. Uh, you read them, and all the time you go. Um, and that was far from the case uh, with this one. It um, prompted me to prompted my imagination, and uh, that is exciting. And um, then I think just discovering the the passion that was behind this project and the ideas and the clear sort of. Uh, thought process that was clearly behind it um, just instilled that passion that I had as a part and uh, yeah I had a long time to sort of get ready for it and a long time to try to get this Okay, so obviously you're best known for Merlin, and then you went on you went to Homeland, you do Eye Zombie. How does it feel to have such a weird character progression in many ways? You mean from Merlin to... Yeah, in general, from moving on from Merlin to this. Um, I'm a drama school kid, so you kind of like, from term to term, you're different, doing different parts. And the drama school I went to uh, throws you... 
in a direction that you wouldn't be putting, um, which helps you adapt, I suppose, uh, and makes you search for that for that change. Um, I found myself in a position after Merlin where the opportunities were very after esque, and that didn't really interest me. Um, and uh, so I found myself being patient, waiting for something to come on that was going to be uh, you know, so much a departure from that. And, and Damien came on, not just the sense, not just the fact that it was different, it was the fact that it was well conceived and, and to say, sort of um, drew that uh, that animation into my um, into my imagination. And, uh, as I I have a question about Damien's psychological health. Is he, is he feeling neurotic at all about being like he's son of Satan and he's like he's kind of divided, like he's struggling with his humanity and his antichrist destiny? Like, is he does he need therapy? Like, how does it feel for you? Like, does he does he is he struggling or is he really a strong character who's pushing forward? I was I was asked earlier a question that isn't the same as that, but it made me come up with the idea that of all the people for this. Uh, burden to fall upon if you know, someone perceives the burden. Um, Damien is probably the guy you would want it to fall upon. And that's not necessarily because he is the best of us, it's just he is a good representation of humanity's moral code. Neither good nor bad, neither, not just sort of, you know, I'm Superman, I do everything that's good, not I'm pick a villain, I do everything that's bad. Um, he is us. He is a representation of all of us sat at this table, you know, people who <laughs> go day to day. That is dangerous. But you don't know who you are in the beginning, right? Or that's what the uh, there's, n there's not an articulation of it. There's an awareness of something strange in comparison to other people. Uh, Damien's life is not what everyone else's life seems to be. And so then there is that awareness that there is something strange, but there's also with that becomes a desire to go With this being a sequel kind of to the original film, did the original Omen sequels uh, influence the series in any way, or you incorporate elements of that? Or can, uh, can we expect any influence from that? Um, we really leaned heavily on the first film. I mean, we have, we're, you know, watched the second and third film, but, you know, they had started developing the character along a certain line, and that didn't feel right. So I'm sort of, we're, we are saying those are not part of our canon, and it's really just the first film, and so that's our starting point for taking it up from there. Okay. Picking back, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, piggybacking up on that question, uh, how is it going to be uh, maybe stylistically or thematically different, given that this is a serialized telling of the story? I mean, how is that going to affect what seems to be... Uh, the movies kind of present his destiny as inevitable. Mm -hmm. And I, I assume that the, the show is going to take a different spin on that. That, uh, that You mentioned free will earlier. Is there, is there some element about telling the story episode to episode that's going to be... Uh, different about how Damon is portrayed or how he's going to fulfill what he does and doesn't do? What, what's fun about writing it as a TV series is that, you know, as he's trying to gain control of his life, you know, it, 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 things happen that he doesn't want. So just like, you know, on other shows that I've written on, you know, say on The Shield, you know, the guys would end up doing something and things go wrong. So, you know, and you have these moments of horror, but you also have, I think, a lot of nice character moments as well. So there's really, you know, what's been fun about taking that first film is it gave us a world, and it gave us a tone, and it gave us a lot to start with. And now you say, okay, let's revisit that world and sort of, you know, freshen it up and visit it, as we're saying, 25 years down the road. So that, that's, that's been... You know, great to do, but I think there's something about the way we're telling the story that makes me feel like a, a TV show is the right way to examine this character. You know, how does he live with it day to day? How does how do other people come into his life? How does you know what does it what does it mean when something goes wrong to him? So it's it's um, I I feel you know great about doing it as a as a show. I think storytelling is maybe a bit more closer to black and white in the seventies. 
And nowadays, with the evolution of television in the place where it's at at the moment, you tell stories of various shades of grey that, uh, that audiences relate to a lot more because they, you know, they have evolved as audiences and how they receive stories and the depth that they're looking for. I think. That's what the TV show does. It allows you to go into the depth that maybe a, a movie can't. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.